We'll welcome a quarter of a million puppies into our homes this year. Of all different shapes and sizes. From the most popular, to the very expensive, to some of the smallest. But new owners be warned. Behind those puppy dog stairs lies a magnet for mischief. Lola, walk. Stop it. No, no. In this series, we follow a group of families and their puppies. Oi! In those all important first six months together. I have to say it's worse than having had a baby. <laughs> the puppies will need training, discipline, and require a whole lot of patience. They can more than quadruple in size consume up to 80 kilograms of food and go to the toilet more than a thousand times. This series explores how the nation's favorite pet adapts to their new world. <laughs> but also the profound effects they can have on the lives of their owners. Yeah. This is the biggest commitment of my life. Uh-oh. Oh, I am a girl who does not take failure very well. Join us on an extraordinary journey as we follow 10 very special puppies as they embark on a new life with 10 very different families. In this episode, we catch up with trainee search and rescue dog Jura as she gives owner Will the runaround. Come on, Jira! No! Heel! While family pet Lola hits a stubborn streak. Lola! Walk, walk. And a single lady looking for a plus-sized pooch risks biting off more than she can chew. Hey, no! No! <laughs> but we start with Alex and Emily Vaughan, who are adding to their brood in leafy Surrey. We need a dog um, that fits into the family. We've got three children at the noisy age, eight, seven, and three. Jesus! And they're just energetic, running around, shouting, screaming, from dawn till dusk. No! Albert, no! Albert! And I think we need a dog that uh, likes that sort of behavior. Well, I think we want a blonde dog, because we're all blonde. <laughs> Octavia, Albert, and younger sister Isadora all have their own ideas about why they want a puppy. Do you want to have a dog to cuddle? Yeah. To kiss? <coughs> to kiss? To kiss? But up until now, the timing hasn't been right. It was sort of three things we were looking at doing. Moving out to the country, having children, having a dog. It was a bit tricky having a dog and being pregnant. So we waited till I stopped breeding so then we could get the dog. <laughs> yes. The Vaughans live in a house with 1.8 acres of grounds. We've got a swimming pool, which the children live in in the summer. When you do play tennis, it's really annoying to have a dog kind of trying to join in and run up and down. Yeah, I think, yes, it's probably best to keep the dog off the tennis court. Ah! <laughs> for a little dog, I think she'll have lots of fun. You haven't got any shoes on, babe. This is your new home, baby girl. <laughs> gently, gently. This is... Poppy. We still haven't chosen the name. Poppies. What's the name of the dog, Isadora? Uh, Poppy. This is Poppy, an eight-week-old Cocker Spaniel. She's a working breed traditionally used as gun dogs to flush out game. Lightweight and nimble, she should be more than a match for the kids. It's the top of that fire that's very hot. The bottom is just very warm. Never play with her when she's in her pen. Let her have quiet time in her pen, OK? It feels really natural. That's what's so brilliant about it. She just looks like she fits in. I just love having a dog. 
they're a lot of fun um, and they are a wonderful thing to add into a family. Oh, wait, she might need to lose. She's going around in circles, Alex. Where's that peanut? Quick, 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 quick. Octavia, I think you're sitting on it. Oh, yes, I am. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's coming out, I think. Daddy, Alex has trodden it round the house. It's too late, Alex, you've trodden it round the house. So she's peed? She's pooped. <laughs> Lift your shoe up. You've got it all over your shoe. And the carpet as well. You've got it all round the house with it. Good thing we've got a carpet cleaner. While Poppy has the run of a sizeable house and garden, The sixth of our new canine companions will be taking up residence in a rather compact first floor two bedroom flat. Hello, Daddy, Lee speaking. I've actually got a situation coming up for you, if it's not here already, where I've got more than one person around you romantically. 32 year old clairvoyant Delia Lewis lives alone in South London. I am so set on getting a dog. I was ready like yesterday, two weeks ago, two months ago. You know, I'm a lady in her 30s and, you know, I don't have a partner and... I wouldn't say that I'm lonely. I do have friends, but I do wish <laughs> that I had either a person or a dog <laughs> here to just kind of snuggle to. Look at that. Delia's looking for a dog to match her personality rather than the size of her flat. I love big dogs because... This is going to sound crazy, but it's like having another person next to you. This is how I feel like it's going to work. Personally, like, this is my side of the bed. Whoosh! And the dog will be on this side of the bed. I mean, I even think a Great Dane could fit here. Delia hasn't yet decided which one of the more than 40 giant dog breeds to choose. So has sought out professional help from dog behaviourist Louise Glazebrook, whose expertise includes helping clients select the right puppy. What are the things that you picture your life being with a dog? What are the personality traits that's really important? I like the, the presence of a bigger dog. I like the clumsiness that comes with their elegance as well. Playfulness is one thing, but over-exuberance all yeah, the time. I, I couldn't... Handle. Yeah. What are the things that you're worried about then about a big dog? My mum especially is concerned that a big dog is going to throw me all over the place. I could be left screaming after my Great Dane as it's going galloping into the distance. Okay. <laughs> With some of these dogs, you know, a puppy can be very sweet and then they're obviously going to keep growing and growing and growing. And so it is that aspect of a fully grown dog and how much space does it take. So I would like to float the idea of actually seeing what it's like to have a large dog yeah. in your house. Yeah. The idea of it can feel like one thing and the reality of it can feel like something else. You know, the amount they weigh, the amount they eat. So we're going to try a few different breeds. Yeah. <laughs> Big dog in my home! <laughs> you don't know what's coming yet. Oh, God! Louise has arranged for two different breeds of dog to visit Delia. <laughs> First up is Great Dane Hank. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is the kitchen, Hank. Oh, my God, he actually comes up to the stove. <gasps> he could steal from the pot as I'm cooking. <laughs> Every year, over 200 Great Danes are given up for adoption by owners unable to cope with their size, strength and need for attention. For Louise, it's important Delia understands exactly what's involved. Proper running. In the oh. you know, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Take them off. <laughs> no, I think it's it might not be my worse. Slipper. Delia, I think maybe, why don't you come and sit down for a minute because I think you're probably getting him a bit excited. Okay. <laughs> Because when you're getting really high-pitched, he's getting really excited. He's still quite young. Oh, see. Then let him just let him have a little sniff, and then he can come back and find you. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to leave you 
to have some fun with Hank, do all the things that a normal dog owner would do. And I want you to enjoy him because he's amazing. I am so excited and a little bit terrified. Amelia and Charlie! <laughs> At the Pay household in Hampshire, it was the kids that made the decision to get a puppy. Come on. Oh. But it took three years to convince Mum Claire and Dad Andy. There's three things that make a Lola. Love, playfulness and... What's the other one? Oh, yeah, food. And love, 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 playfulness and food. They welcomed home golden retriever Lola eight weeks ago on the proviso the kids would help out. Please take her outside, Amelia. Oh. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah. But the children are only interested in playing with their pet. And it's Claire that's been left to do the less exciting training. What's the point of a pet? Oh, well, for well, love and companionship. Yeah, well, I mean, exactly, You've got an office to go to. You're all right. Well, there you go. I you get like love and companionship at work. <laughs> well, they do <laughs> like me, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> the last two months have been a battle of wills. Claire versus Lola. <laughs> No, no, no! I think it's been an extreme experience so far. <laughs> now, on the pavement, Lola, pavement. If you just come towards me, this way. What's next, really, is training. We really need to try and get her under control. She is a big dog. We're relying on her goodwill to do anything we want her to do. Goodwill and snacks. Lola's now four months old. In her bid to take back control, Claire's come up with a new tactic, sausages. So the idea is that I hold a sausage in her mouth, which is really disgusting, because it means she then licks my hand, and you walk like that, and she goes, mm. but then, and that gets her walking, you say, heel, good heel, good heel. There you go. Right, off we go, Lola. Another battle about to commence. The biggest battleground is the school run where Claire needs Lola to walk the 400 metres from the car to the school gate. Lola, heel, heel, Lola. She's just, she's just been sitting down in the car and at home. She doesn't walk, Lola, heel. She looks at me as though she's thinking, just tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. But she isn't, as I'm telling her what I want her to do. She's not doing it. Are you, looking, are you thinking there's a sausage in this here? Sausage. Right, sausage, Lola, sausage. No, walk. Now I know I'm in trouble if she won't even stand up for a sausage. Right, walking, Lola, walking. Heel, heel, good heel. Good heel, Lola, good heel. <laughs> Lola, walk, walk. Walk, stand. Heel, heel. Claire used to carry Lola, but since she came to live with the family, she's almost quadrupled in weight, putting on nearly 16 kilos. It's like resistance training. <laughs> Lola. Oh. 15 minutes later, Claire and Lola finally make it up the hill to school. There you go, get her on her feet. There we go, won't she stand on This isn't right, this can't be right. I've never seen anyone dragging a puppy along the ground like this. We're trying to get on a set route in a set time and then Lola won't walk and it's all just a, uh, such a stressful situation. It's quite disheartening, I question myself. I don't, I don't know what else to try. In the Scottish Highlands, Will Davis has been on his own steep learning curve, training his border collie, Jura. She's now five and a half months old and approaching adolescence. So Jura's definitely ended a puppy stage and she's entered a sort of junior stage. See how alert she is. <laughs> and how she's changed now that uh, other things are going on. Hey, little guard dog. Jura. 
What are we going to do now? What are we doing? What have I got? What have I got? Will and Jura are getting ready for a make or break assessment. If they succeed, they'll join the Search and Rescue Dog Association's coveted training program. Remember this game? Right, good girl, Jura. Training began two months ago with a game called The Runaway. Find it, find it. Testing Jura's basic ability to search out a body. What's he got, Jura? But she struggled with one crucial element. <laughs> the only thing missing from your search sequence, Will, is the, an indication. You've got to get Jura to bark. Ta-da! What's that? So for the last eight weeks, Will's been focused on getting her pitch perfect. Go find it. What's she got, hey? Jura? Find it. Good girl, good girl. Perfect, nailed it. It took ages and ages to get. Every time she barked, I basically said the word speak. Speak. Good girl. And then just repeated, repeated, repeated. Good girl, Jura! She's a natural. Jura might have found her bark, but that's not all she has to master. Will's aim is to train her to work at his side as he patrols the slopes of the Nevis Range. This is dangerous terrain, so he not only needs to teach her search skills, but perfect obedience. The recall is essential. If we're doing a search, she could end up running off a cliff. So a recall's got to be bang on. If I know there's a cliff there and she, she doesn't know and she's running towards it being a daft dog, uh, I need to be able to recall her no matter what. So that's the priority with it. Oi! Come on! This way! Jura! Come on, Jira! Uh oh. No! No! Oi! <laughs> Don't put that in. Border Collies are the most intelligent dogs in the world, able to pick up a new command in less than five repetitions. But even the brightest dogs can't avoid the pitfalls of adolescence. Jura's selective hearing and desire to roam are signs that she's lost her impulse control, a typical teenage trait. If she sees something that she wants, like a bird flying low to the ground, she just bolts. I mean, what I've realised is I've sort of rushed into the search training and I've maybe neglected basic obedience stuff. I need to get this basic obedience squared away. Just make sure that she behaves and stops getting distracted by absolutely everything apart from me. Jura's assessment day is only three months away. If she shows signs of being easily distracted, she could be permanently relegated to pet status. The point of having the dog is to hopefully save someone's life. It's a pretty big responsibility getting it right. I still feel like I'm a million miles away from it. Pretty scary. Will's not alone. All of our 10 owners will need to master the recall command. But a pup can be reluctant to return to their owner if they're happily occupied or worried about being punished. The trick lies in offering a favorite treat or toy and showering them with praise every time they come back. In Surrey, working Cocker Spaniel Poppy has spent her first week with the Vaughans and has had the children's undivided attention. Be gentle. A puppy is a challenge, but the biggest challenge is it's a new toy and they can't put it down. They have to be with the puppy and playing with the puppy all the time. But being so popular is taking its toll. Poppy isn't getting any downtime. Oh, you have to go in here. 
Can you grab her? Right, now be careful because you could squash her. Don't do that. I will take that away from you all. You're the dogs. <laughs> Come on, madam. Don't be an old lady. Come on. Where's her rabbit, Isadora? Oh, there we go. And her blanket. I'll put her blanket in her bed. She can have a little, and I'll leave her bone. We're going to leave her in there and just leave her alone for a bit, OK? Puppies should sleep for about two-thirds of the day as they're developing at such an incredible rate. A lack of rest can stunt a pup's growth and lead to bad behaviour. Yeah, just give it a little bit of a sluice out while she's asleep and then fill it up with water. But less than 10 minutes into Poppy's sleep, the kids are back pestering her. Isadora, when the puppy's in there, you must leave her alone. While Albert and Octavia are learning that Poppy needs some space, Isadora's too young to understand the rules. Three-year-old girls will do what they want, and Isadora is going to do whatever she's told not to do. She's not a... She's not a ballet dancer, is she? She's a dog. She's dancing! She's not dancing, and no dancing with her. Don't pull her like that. But I want her. No, you can't, though. If I don't have my wits about me and I leave the puppy in Isadora, I will find the puppy dressed up like a baby doll in baby grows, sunglasses, you name it. And then she'll be put in a pram and pushed around. And that'll be Isadora's little baby forever. Puppy, come here. Puppy, puppy, puppy. Are you drying her hair? Yes. Puppy, 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 come here. Puppy, come here. Isadora. When the puppy's in there, you must leave her alone. <laughs> Unhappy with the situation, Poppy is starting to fight back. <laughs> what happened, my angel? I think you're OK, aren't you? You all right? Can you explain what's, what Poppy's done? It's a cart. What, how did it happen? Put did it on purpose. I can see. I'll give you a kiss. Mm -hmm. She's had a few nips, but not in an aggressive way. Uh, and there's been a few tears because of that. But um, the children know that it's play and it's not aggression. Play biting is called mouthing. While biting on toys is totally normal puppy behaviour, biting people should be discouraged. Not least because a nip from their razor-sharp baby teeth can be painful. Although usually an innocent form of play and exploration, biting can also be a sign a puppy's not happy or wants to be left alone. Isadora has been, as, ex as expected, quite challenging. She'll get hurt by the dog, and then two minutes later she'll be in the cage with the dog, uh, right up close, which she's not allowed to do. Come on, little girl. You we need to go into your little cage, don't you, my little girl? We don't want to have a grumpy, stroppy puppy that snaps at people. If she gets utterly fed up, she will lash out and snap, and that'll stop the children uh, disturbing her. And I'm not sure that's really a pattern of behaviour we want to encourage. In South London, professional psychic Delia is enjoying an intense afternoon with Great Dane Hank. Oh, dinner time. Delia is desperate for a big dog to share her flat. And there. But before deciding what puppy to get, Louise wants her to experience the reality of looking after a giant breed. I had been told by Louise that feeding Great Danes and all dogs actually could benefit from 
raised eating and raised drinking. Louise actually meant from a raised box. But however she feeds her Great Dane, Delia would have to allow for a sizable food budget of more than £50 per month. Oh, a drool on the hands I can deal with. Now this is, this is the sleeping position. See, dog on one side, Delia on the other. Perfect. Oh, look at it. Oh, God. I can't have you in the bed with all of that. Don't give me that look. As Delia's discovering, Great Danes are prone to slobber. Excessive drooling is caused by a specific gene that some have and some don't. And Hank definitely has it. Not the slippers, not Mr. Sniffles, the humanity. <laughs> Can I have it back? I can't have it back. Oh. <laughs> oh. Before today, I'm thinking I really loved Great Danes, but the play is immense. It's, you know, it's big. And yeah, you kind of don't know whether to freeze, run away, scream, or just join in. So I might have to hit the gym. I think he farted. Yep. Hank, goodbye. Hank's visit has given Delia much to ponder. <laughs> Take care. Take Bye. care. Bye. And Sister Lizzie has her own opinion. The dog is too big. I'm sorry, it's too big. I, I feel like you are not supporting me in my dog choices. I am trying to make you see reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see reason. I want you have to, to, you know, to be, you're always prattling on about me about being practical. So I, now I will prattle on about you about being practical. In Hampshire, the Pays chose a very practical, family-friendly pet in Golden Retriever Lola when they got her three months ago. But so far, she's defying her breed's amiable nature and refusing to walk. I'm an optimist in some ways. I think maybe today, maybe today she'll walk. And today could be the day. The first six months of a dog's life is the easiest period to nip tricky behavior in the bud. So it's the ideal time to call in canine expert, Louise. Oh, hello, hi. Who spent over 10 years teaching owners the correct way to train their dogs. To show Louise the problem, they're heading back to school to get Lola to do a dummy run of her twice daily walk. I thought dogs all wanted to walk. And that they, <laughs> they were enthusiastic walkers. And one of the reasons we got a dog was to get us out walking as a family. Um, and she doesn't, she doesn't want to walk. walk. No. Okay. What I'm scared of is if I'm ruining her at the moment because I'm not doing the right thing. And, you know, that, that she won't turn out as we're hoping because Do I have Do you feel like right most thing. of the pressure's on you? Yes, I feel all the pressure's on me. Right, should yeah. we get out and let's see yeah. what Lola's doing? Let's see. She'll probably be really well behaved today. Oh. Okay. So you just do what you would normally do. This, okay. this is what she normally does, it lie down? Yes. <laughs> Lola. Right, sausage. So this is when the clock is ticking <laughs> and I've left too late to get to school. Lola. OK, right, now walking, walking. Walking, Lola. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Right, good walking. Well done. Now you're going over there again. Why are you lying there? <laughs> Why are you there? Lola? It is funny to watch because Claire, bless her, is constantly talking to her. You don't need to lie down to watch the cyclist. But I think she's just talking at the wrong times. What are you doing there, Lola? You're supposed to be walking to school. <laughs> Dragging and pulling isn't advisable, especially as Lola's bones are still soft. Is that fun, Lola? The first thing Louise wants to pull Claire up on is her haphazard approach to giving treats. Some of your 
rewarding is sort of inadvertently rewarding the behaviour that you don't uh. want. I think it's just about kind of train, training her to be rewarded for walking mm. rather than lying down. Yeah. And then it's like as soon as she lies down, something comes out for her. So, essentially, if she goes to lie down, I'm going to leave her to do it. And then as soon as she decides to get up and move, I'm going to reward her. So the movement gets rewarded rather than the lying down. Because at the moment, when she lies down, Claire goes over and gets the tree and gets her to get up. Still lying down. <laughs> Takes patience. Good girl, Lola. Well done. You're so clever. Time for Claire to give it a go. There you go, right. Good girl. Who's going to give you a treat next? So leave her, don't talk to her. Good. Well done. So what I'd also try and do, and I know this is really difficult, yeah. try not to talk to have conversations with her. OK. Use a particular word, and that's like good girl or walking or whatever you want it to be but so it's consistent rather than chatting to her. Okay. Otherwise, if we talk too much, she can kind of end up filtering it okay. all out. Yeah. I'd also say that what's difficult is that because these two walks are the only ones that she's sort of generally doing... Yes. ..you've got, like, a time-sensitive element to it. Lola's more worried about kind of doing all the things that dogs want to do. We do need to factor in time for her to work things out. At five months old, the world is still all new and exciting for Lola. From the scent of a flower to the taste of a leaf, for this innocent young puppy, every inch of her environment is tempting her with new smells, sounds and shapes. So look, that's like a perfect example of being... The world's amazing because a leaf has blown past. Yeah, she loves leaves. So she... let her do that. Good the, girl. Oh, good walking, Lola. Well oh, you're such done. a good girl. I think today was wonderful. It was really wonderful. Um, I love the tips that Louise gave me for walking. Lovely. I'm looking forward to putting them into practice on the school run. Lovely. Yeah. And she's just given me a lot more confidence uh, with Lola. What I really want Claire and Lola to do is start enjoying each other and having fun together, because if that relationship is cemented, all the other things can come from that. <laughs> that takes time, um, but it's totally achievable. Jira, come here. Oi, come here. Good girl. For all novice owners, a dog's disobedience can be frustrating and inconvenient. But for Will in Scotland, his border collie juror's willful nature is also putting their future plans at risk. Because of having to switch up and stop the search training and go back to obedience, um, we've hardly been doing any search stuff over the last few weeks. I'm definitely behind schedule with where I should be for this assessment at the end of winter. It's getting a little bit worrying that I'm still concentrating on getting my dog to sit or come back to me rather than go and find someone. Um, but I've still got total confidence in her, just a lack of confidence with myself. Yes, go on. Uh, uh, uh. Despite all the training, Will's still concerned about the risk of Jura running off. Woohoo! Good girl! <laughs> Cliffs, right there. We've got so many things to be thinking about in the morning. There's so many things that go wrong on a daily basis that are kind of out of our hands. And then the dog runs off. It's the last thing I need. For Jura to succeed as a search and rescue dog, she needs to be fully focused on Will's commands 100% of the time. To add to the challenge, when Jura's assessment comes in the spring, the Highlands will be teeming with wildlife and livestock. One of the biggest things standing in the way of her becoming a search dog is her 
very natural interest in sheep. She's a sheep dog. So I'm trying to untrain her natural instincts. Come on, Jura, this way. Come on. Jura, like all border collies, is descended from wolves. Their desire to herd is a modified version of their ancestors' instinct to hunt and kill, toned down through 200 years of selective breeding. No. Ah, ah. Good girl. Will thinks he can conquer this natural behavior with some of his own tougher version therapy. Every time she even looks at the sheep, just trying to make sure she knows that's not what she's allowed to do. Hey! It's not very nice for her. It's not particularly nice for me to do this either. You know, I don't really like doing it. She's looking at them a lot. Stay. That was a strong look at them there. There are now only two months to go until the assessment that will decide Jura's fate. If I don't nip this in the bud now, then she'll always be bad for it and she won't. She'll fail her assessment. It's, it's that black and white. As Will's finding out, in any human-dog relationship, striking the perfect balance is a tricky art to master. Good girl! And it's not just the dogs that have a lot to learn. Oh, ah. <laughs> At the Vaughan family estate, 15-week-old Poppy is growing at a phenomenal rate, putting on around 12% of her body weight each week. <laughs> but for mum and dad, rearing a puppy and small children is still proving to be a challenge. We'll go back to the house. Here comes the poppy. Poppy, can you take the sledge up for us? <laughs> can drive you around the bend. Managing a puppy and a, and a, and a three-year-old is, is difficult. Um, I mean, it was one of the things that slightly surprised me about Poppy is she's not the problem, the three-year-old's the problem. As a mother of young children and dog owner herself, Louise knows all about the potential pitfalls of combining the two. Oh, hello. Hi, hello. Hi, Louise. Nice, Hi, to, meet nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Come on in. Do you want me to take my shoes off? No, it's fine. OK. Hi. Hello. Good this morning. is a nice place for her to sleep. I've already taught her how to sit. Oh, well done, Poppy, you. Sit, sit Poppy. I'm <laughs> just lying down. It won't work. Wow. So, Octavia, how do you think Poppy's doing? Um. Well, except now and again she's biting. Okay. To stop completely. You'd like her to stop completely. Yeah. Okay. To get a better idea of why Poppy might be biting, Louise decides to join in with the children's play session. So what? When she goes in the box, what does she normally like to do when she's in there? Um, she likes to chew it. Okay. Maybe don't rock it though. Because you don't rock it. Oh, I think let's keep her so she can see. Because you wouldn't like to be in a box without being able to see, would you? Oh, she is having a nice time. OK. Yeah, she likes to scratch Oh, do you want to come out of there, Poppet? Where's... OK. I would say, from my point of view, what you're getting is a lot of biting and nipping, essentially to try and get you guys to stop doing things. And I think, like, now, I know, Octavia, you want to stroke her, but she's lying down on her own. So she's not come and sort out any interaction. If she keeps having boundaries broken, potentially she is going to get to a point where it, she uses something that... an aggressive display that you don't like. I mean, that... It, it hadn't really occurred to me that she would not expect anyone to interfere with her when she was lying there. If she wants... To, we've always had that as a space... That she yeah, and which is great, and that. I would keep that. And it, it, it's worked reasonably well, um, but I think we need, need to enforce it. When she's <coughs> asleep there, she needs to be left alone. Yeah. I have a two-year-old and a four-year-old, so I'm fully aware of, let's say, how challenging they can be sometimes. As young as Adora's resistant to the idea of giving Poppy any time alone, Louise has another suggestion. If you put a baby gate on here... Yeah. ..and actually the dog ones are here, so actually Zadora wouldn't be able to open it. She gets to go in there, she's got amazing access to outside, and then if you're cooking, 
or you need to make a phone call or you can't physically see what they're doing, if you pop her in there with a chew, actually what you're saying to her is hang out on your own yeah. with something that she can get on with. And um, then she will associate the space as her. With good things. It's a classic problem of what happens with children and dogs because children want to be with dogs. Dogs start sniffing and biting. Um, it can really easily be put down to teething, whereas actually I think with Poppy, a lot of it is that she wants some space and needs to be left alone. Isadora, do you now understand that when Poppy's having a little bit of sleeping, yes! lying in front of the fire, what do you yes! do? You leave her alone, do you? Yes, Because that's when she wants a little rest. What happens if she turns over onto her back and wants us to... My tummy. Unless she actually says explicitly, can you please come and tickle my tummy? <laughs> Otherwise, she's only got one choice because she can't talk. If you keep pestering her, the only choice she's got is to give you a bite. For ski patroller Will and aspiring rescue dog Jura, it's finally judgment day and both are looking to impress. I've been working up to this moment really since I've had Jira, so that's seven months now. Everything I've been doing at Nevis Range is kind of all boiling down to this weekend. The SADA training team and all the other handlers are going to look at her and look at me and decide whether uh, she's trainable and I'm trainable as well. But they could say she's not what we're looking for and then that's it. I've just got a pet. The assessment is taking place in the Cairngorms, where Will and Jura have two days to prove themselves worthy of joining the Search and Rescue Dog Association's training program. Yeah, this definitely feels uh, pretty real now, but uh, quite intimidated, to be honest. Just got to keep my head down and prove myself, hopefully. There are 14 dogs here at different stages of their training, including six rookies like Jura. A little bit concerned about her. Don't want to get too nervous and shy. Changing routine, loads of dogs. I guess maybe she can sort of sense that I'm a bit tense. Today, Will and Jora will be judged by Will's mentor, Tom Gilchrist, and his SADA colleague, Darren Steetham. We'll be looking at Will and Jura as a team. It's not just about the dog, it's about Will himself and how he's going to respond to the association, to the training, to the job that he's hopefully going to be aiming to do at the end of it. It's going to be a high-pressure weekend for them both. Will and Jura will be tested on the three key elements of the runaway game. Finding the body, barking spontaneously and, crucially, not getting distracted. That's what we want. Two-year-old Malinois Hamish has done a perfect run. Time for Jura to show what she's made of. Jura wants to go, wants to play that game. That's great. If we get a bark out of Jura, I'll be very, very, very happy. Jura! Woo! Come on! Jura! Oh, thank you. Oh. Instead of going directly to the body and staying with it, Jura gets distracted. Come on. Go find it. I don't know what happened there when she went in. I think she just got a little bit confused. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? I don't think she was maybe distracted by something. Jura has just one more chance today to impress the examiners, with the added challenge of a new body for her to track. But once again, Jura loses focus and wanders <laughs> off. <laughs> Work it out, Jura. It was all right. She's done better, and she got distracted by something yeah. both times. Yeah. Don't get despondent. There's certainly the enthusiasm of, of the dog's good. Yeah, but yeah. Just a wee bit more from yourself. It's right, OK. That. She's under no illusions wherever she's gone that what I've done is right. I'm a little bit disheartened, but, um, yeah, there's a lot, a lot going on for her. 
Will and Jura have only one more day to prove themselves. It sounds very brutal, but we have to have 100% confidence that at the end of this training, when we put Will and Jura out onto a job or a rescue for real, that they have the skills and the training that they're going to need to succeed in that job. If we have any doubts in our mind, then we can't do that. In Hampshire, it's Judgment Day for Claire too. 8.30 a.m. and as usual, Lola's joining the family on the school run. Let's go, Charlie. It's been three weeks since Louise came to help tackle Lola's stubborn refusal to walk. Good walking, Layla. Good walking. Well done, Layla. Good girl. Well done. Good girl, Layla. Good walking. I think probably what's changed is that I've just learned to be more patient with her and give her more time. That's been nice and quick today. <laughs> it's been a tumultuous five months since the Pay family welcomed Lola home. She loves it everywhere. <laughs> but reluctant owners Claire and Andy are starting to see the benefits. It's definitely getting easier. You've got the fact that there's another member of the family that the children adore, absolutely adore her, and you can see that she, she wants to sort of shower her love on you. Here she comes. <laughs> I think there's just much more going to come out of the relationship. You know, it's not just an annoying puppy. This is a being. I think there is a connection coming. And as for the kids... Lola is definitely like a third sister. Ah! Just in doggy form. Yes. I wouldn't change her for the world. I wouldn't even choose her for Labrador. I love all dogs, some dogs, most dogs, most dogs, most dogs, no chihuahuas. In South London, Delia's still deciding which breed of large dog she wants to share her small flat with. Although I'm keeping very open-minded, I just think it'll be really difficult for any other dog to top the Great Dane experience. Louise has arranged for Delia to meet another candidate. And in preparation, she's bought new footwear. You would think I would have learned my lesson. Oh, no, no. No, I am here with another pair of slippers. <laughs> this is Nelson, a two-year-old Leonberger. Nelson, hello, Nelson. Oh, my God, this is making my day. <laughs> Hello, Nelson. You're not going to kill my slippers like the Great Dane, are you? <laughs> the Leonberger comes from Germany and was originally bred to resemble a lion. It's got them. Um... Its life expectancy is four years longer than the Great Dane, and it's slightly smaller. I know. But an adult male still weighs in at a hefty ten stone. I mean, obviously, he's quite a big boy, but, like, he's very... Considerate of playtime. He's not pulling too hard. I know he can. Oh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, have a seat. Sit, sit. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, this is happy doggy. He's a happy Leo. You're a happy Leo. Oh, and you're falling in love. He's lovely. He's, he's really soft in, like, temperament, not boisterous. We should have had a date first, you know, maybe dinner, wine. Unlike Great Danes, Leonbergers have a double thick coat and molt heavily twice a year. This is a lot less than I was expecting for such a long haired dog. You know, it's this is quite manageable. 
But if Delia opts for this breed, she'll have to consider additional costs for professional grooming of up to £300 a year. Nelson! Have you made yourself comfortable, Your Highness? Yes, Your Royal Highness. <laughs> you want your cuddle, dear? Definitely put a spanner in the works. Trying out big dogs is just <laughs> confirming to me over and over and over again that I really love big dogs. Ah, oh, this is so hard now. Great Dane, Liam Virgo. We will see. I'm ready! Where's Albert? Where's he gone? Cocker Spaniel Poppy is now eight months old. The kids have found the perfect game to play with her. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Hide and seek. Where is he? Where is he, Pops? Where is he? Oh, God. This game stretches Poppy both physically and mentally. Like Jura, her hunt instinct relies on her senses. She has exceptional hearing, far superior to humans. Allowing her to hear even a small bird land a quarter of a mile away. Oh, hi, girl. Oh, good girl. Inside, while Poppy's having a well-earned break, the rest of the family have learned to occupy themselves, even as Adora. Wiz, what do we do when Poppy's sleeping? Not go near her. Yes! Poppy's great. She's uh, she's everything we wanted. Imagining a life without Poppy, it was it was easier, but um it wasn't as much fun. She adds that little bit of joy, doesn't she? And there are times when we just look at each other and just think, yeah, we've definitely definitely done the right thing. She just wants to be with us as part of the family, which is exactly what we wanted. Poppy's my favourite sink. I think she's just a joy to have at home and um, there's nothing else she could really want. It's early Sunday morning in the Cairngorms. After a disappointing first day of assessments with Sada, Will's pinning all his hopes on Jura upping her game. We could have setbacks that are even worse than yesterday. There is that total uncertainty. I've got to chill out and I've got to be, yeah, there's, I can't be passing on this tension and nerves to the dog. Can you get your dogs to sit to attention, please? <laughs> Today, another SADA examiner, Angus Stephen, is joining Tom to judge Jura and Will's performance. The focus has to be on the body because that's what we're really looking for them to do. If the dog starts getting distracted, particularly at this early stage, it's like a foundation. If you don't get the foundations right, then, then the rest of it just goes to pot. If it was a member of my family that was missing, would I be happy that this dog could go out, search and perform as it needs to? Yeah. Now Will and Jura have just two chances left to pass the test. Go for it whenever you're ready. Great. Good girl, Jura! So that's perfect. Still focusing the body. Not interested in dad at all. Got the toy. Perfect. If Jura succeeds today, she'll spend the next two years on the SADA training programme. Using over 200 million receptors in her nose, she'll eventually be able to find a body by scent alone. That's great for a wee dog. Right, come on back. Good girl, Jura! What have you found? That was good as well because that was that was very short break between the two yeah. two runaways there, yeah. so it's, it's still kept her focus. Yeah. Come on, good girl. 
How do you think that went, Will? Good. I think, yeah. Did you see a difference from yesterday? Yeah. What? Uh, no distraction, straight to the body, total mm -hmm. focus yeah. and spontaneous uh, indication as well. Yep. She didn't tell her to speak. Yep, yep. Um, but the main thing was just total, no running past her, no smelling anything around her, no, just no, straight into total. the body. Yep, yep. All Will and Jura can do now is wait while the judges deliberate on their verdict. I think I've got the potential to make a good dog handler. Whether those guys do, um, you know, I've certainly tried to make a good impression. I think, I hope, that everything they've been watching uh, of me and Jura has, uh, has sort of pleased them and, you know, and I've met their, their standards. Hey, well, how you doing? All right. Come and take a seat. Cheers. How's your weekend been? Yeah, good. 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 Um, enjoyed it? Yeah, definitely enjoyed it. Good. Learned a lot about what else can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just, it's not easy. You're working with an animal. Mm -hmm. uh, animals have good days and bad days. Mm -hmm. You have good days and bad days. Yeah. And your animal picks up in your days, good days and bad days as yeah. well. So, so there's a lot of variables in there and it's not easy. Um, you know, people, there are people who don't make it, and there are people who, who, who breeze through it, and then there's people who work hard and get there. Mm -hmm. So... We, we, we hope you've looked at the other dogs as well, and that yeah, you've seen yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Stopped, yeah. we, we have high standards. Yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 And they have to be met. They have to be met. Um, and if they're not met... Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It. No, I yeah, okay. totally understand, yeah. So we're pleased to be able to say to you that uh, at this stage, we've accepted you into training. We'll review you in uh, two or three training weekends' time, make sure you're still making the progress yeah. uh, in the right kind of direction that we're looking for. Fingers but crossed we that we think can... you have the potential. Yeah. Cheers. There you go, bud. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Thanks for that. Yeah, I'm in. Well I think. done, yeah, you so, clever yeah. boy. Yeah. I am now a dog handler, and yeah, uh, she is officially a working dog now. I'm immensely proud of Jura. Jura is totally changed my life but for the better. She's a very, very special little pup that's developing into a pretty hardcore legend of a dog. Six hundred miles away in London, Delia's after a soulmate of her own. Louise and her Great Dane Fred are on their way to find out if the try before you buy approach has solved Delia's dog dilemma. Hello. I will. Do you think it was useful? I think it was exceptionally useful. Okay. Um, okay. What I thought about each breed, I changed my mind. I, I would even say I've got a better appreciation of each dog. Okay. So, the puppy I have decided to go for is. the Liam Burger. I knew, I knew. <laughs> Not only have I made a decision, I'm actually collecting a puppy. Oh my goodness, yeah. when? This weekend. <gasps> Next time, new families with very different puppy dreams. <laughs> a dog to help with autism. Hunter. Is he being nice? And a pug to turn into a media star. Oh, I like the look over the shoulder, that's good. And we catch up with Delia as the realities of puppy life hit home. No! I'm actually terrified.